We've seen how adverse selection can give rise to deadweight losses in insurance markets. In the car insurance market, for example, we saw that if insurance companies can't tell who's a safe driver and who's an unsafe driver, then they're going to be stuck in what we called a pooling equilibrium, an equilibrium in which everybody ends up in the same insurance pool and pays the same premiums for car insurance. In that case, we saw that unsafe drivers ended up buying too much insurance relative to what's efficient, and safe drivers ended up buying too little. The solution to that was to figure out who the safe and unsafe drivers were, and to instead be in what we called a separating equilibrium, an equilibrium where there are separate insurance markets for safe and unsafe drivers. So the safe drivers would get low premiums and the unsafe drivers would get high premiums. Now, if we applied the same logic to health insurance, we would conclude that the efficient thing to do is to create separate insurance markets for the young and healthy and the old and the sick. The old and sick are high cost demanders of health insurance and so they would be charged high premiums and the young and the healthy are low cost demanders of health insurance and so they would be charged low premiums. But there are some considerations that enter with health insurance that are different from those we see in other types of insurance. The first of those is that there's a fairly predictable path we take through life where we start as relatively low cost demanders of health insurance when we're young and healthy and we end up becoming higher cost demanders of health insurance as we get older and we get health problems. So if we ask people to buy health insurance for the rest of their life, at the beginning of their life, they would think, if they were rational, about the fact that their need for health insurance is going to increase over their lifetime. And so they'd be willing to pay a premium that takes that into consideration. But instead, we buy health insurance on an annual basis, and each year we get a chance to buy health insurance again. The second consideration is that Health insurance has a social insurance component because we think of healthcare as something that's closer to a right. Unlike driving a car, which we think of as a privilege, and if you don't drive it well, if you're unsafe, we're okay with you paying a higher price for driving a car and being insured. Healthcare we think of as more of a right. So the social insurance component is the part that makes us say we should, in fact, take care of those who are most vulnerable and the older and sicker people are more vulnerable when it comes to health care and we should find a way for them to be able to have health care. So those two considerations become part of the health policy debate that relates to health insurance. But adverse selection is still at the center of that debate. We can either establish a separating equilibrium in health insurance or a pooling equilibrium. If we establish a separating equilibrium, we've already seen that the old and sick will end up with high premiums. In fact, their premiums will be so high that a lot of them would not be able to afford to pay for health insurance. So the most vulnerable people would be unable to afford the insurance that they need. The people who need the insurance the most would be least likely to be able to afford it. But what about if we forced everybody into a pooling equilibrium? We basically say to insurance companies, you can't create separate markets based on age and health condition. Well, in that case, insurance companies have to charge the same price to everybody. And everybody has to be in the same pool. But if people get to choose on an annual basis whether to have health insurance, the young and the healthy might decide that it's too expensive to pay those premiums. Those premiums would be much higher than they would have been had younger and healthier people been able to be in a separate market. And if younger and healthier people adversely select out of the insurance pool, the premiums for everybody else are going to rise. And as those premiums rise, other people may decide it's not worth it on an annual basis to buy that health insurance. Those are also going to be likely to be younger and healthier people. As they exit, the premiums rise even further. And we get something similar to what we saw with unemployment insurance, a kind of unraveling of the market, maybe not a full unraveling, but at least a partial unraveling of that market that results in insurance premiums being relatively high for those people who need the insurance the most, the older and the sicker. 
So in either case, we seem to end up with a situation where insurance becomes less affordable the more you need it. And those who don't need it may either not buy it in the pooling equilibrium or may be able to get it for a really low price in a separating equilibrium. So that's one issue that arises directly from the adverse selection problem. And many different countries have found different ways of addressing that problem, and we'll talk about some of that in class. Now there's a second problem that emerges in healthcare markets, and that problem is related to moral hazard. So moral hazard, we've said, arises as a result of the fact that we tend to change behavior when the incentives change as we enter a contract. So when we enter a health insurance contract, we now have different incentives. One of the consequences of that may be that people who have insurance engage in less healthy behaviors. They have some protection for the consequences of those behaviors, and so they may engage in more of them. But there's another part of the moral hazard problem that health economists have worried about more. And that part concerns the level of consumption of health care. So think of your demand for health care. Not your demand for health insurance, but your demand for health care. And let's say that health care can be bought in different units composed of doctor's visits and hospital visits and tests and so forth. And that there's some marginal cost to getting additional units of health care. And then people have a demand for health care. If they face that marginal cost, if they have to pay that marginal cost, they're going to choose to purchase this much health care. But if they're insured, they face a much lower cost. They don't have to pay for the entire cost of health care. They may have to pay for some deductibles or some co-payments, but their cost will be much lower. So if they face a health insurance price once they are in the health insurance contract that's below marginal cost they're going to keep buying health care until this point so they're going to purchase more health care and the additional units of health care they purchase have a lower marginal benefit than the marginal cost so there may be overconsumption of health care that's induced by being insured you may agree to Tests that you really don't need. Tests where the cost of the test doesn't justify the benefit of the test. You may go to extra doctor's visits to get second and third and fourth opinions. You may get surgeries that in the end you didn't really need, but because they were relatively cheap, you went ahead and got them. You may get treatments of all sorts that you wouldn't get if you confronted the full cost of those treatments. So one concern that relates to moral hazard that concerns some health economists is that individuals might overconsume health care and that overconsumption might push up the price of health care and raise health care costs. So we've got two kinds of issues that emerge and that are central in health policy debates. One is the adverse selection problem that causes premiums to go up most for those people who are most vulnerable, who need insurance the most whether they're in a separating equilibrium and have their own market where they get charged a high premium, or whether they're in a pooling equilibrium where adverse selection out of the insurance pool of younger and healthier people raises the premiums for everybody else. The other problem is the moral hazard problem. There's disagreement about how big a problem that is, but some health economists think that the change in incentives once we have insurance will cause us to overconsume insurance, which will to overconsume healthcare, which will push up healthcare costs and make the whole system less affordable.